Hey family, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you're well. Happy New Year, guys. I want to come on and share this word with you guys. It's something that the Lord continued to unfold back to back to back yesterday as I was coaching. So when God does this, I know that it's a corporate word. It needs to go out. And so I took some time to spend with the Lord to see what else he wanted to say about this and to seal up this word. So I got a rhema word in here for you guys as well. And also have some scripture and then we'll just let the Holy Spirit flow as he always does. So what the Lord was showing me is that many of you are concerned about doing the right thing, which is keeping you stuck, meaning that you don't want to make a mistake. And this is what is causing for many of you this spiritual paralysis, so to speak, right? And then fear and anxiety comes into play with this and it puts you in a position of toiling, almost toiling for the promise or toiling, spinning your wheels uh, at go, like you can't get past go. And God doesn't want you operating from this place. He also cannot bless you from this place. He also cannot move until you move. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So thus says the Lord, many of my children are concerned with the outcome. I am the one who determines that. It is I who made the plan and will bring it to my expected end. I am orchestrating my plan in the heavens that will be revealed on earth. There is an order to what I am doing and many of my children are getting in the way. Just let me work and you will see, says the Lord. I need you to rest and trust me. You will gain nothing but stress, sickness, and unbelief by concerning yourself with spiritual matters. I give the instruction and my command is that you follow it. I will take care of the rest, says the Lord. And this rest is twofold, meaning he gave you a promise. He spoke a prophetic word to you. He's revealed something to you and he's given you an instruction, whether that is to wait, whether that is to you know put your hands to what he shows you to do. So he's going to take care of the rest, meaning bringing it to pass, meaning whatever needs to happen in the heavenlies, in the kingdom of God to come down on earth, his kingdom come, his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so he's saying, yes, I'll take care of the rest. And then also the mental rest that you need to enter into so that you can come out of fear, so that you can come out of anxiety, so that you can come out of toiling, right? And, and that toiling is... Is stressing many of you out. And this is what the Lord is saying, that you would gain nothing but stress if you don't rest. The sickness of the mind, right? Also, um, just a hope deferred, making the heart sick and so much more. And then unbelief, like God doesn't want you in any of that. So this is why he's saying you got to stay in my presence and you got to rest, right? And then when he said concerning ourselves with spiritual matters, He's just saying, let me do my part. He has a host in heaven. He has a legion of angels that are fighting on your behalf, okay? So many of you are in a place of rest where God is saying, settle down, okay? And, and this rest, my God, is here in your mind, in your mindset. Many of you are uh, going off of these vain imaginations of what you think the expected end is going to be or how you think God's going to work it out or what is God going to do because it seems impossible. He doesn't want you worrying about that. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And so the Lord kept bringing to me yesterday, the midnight hour, the midnight hour, the midnight hour. And so midnight is a transition of one day ending and another beginning. And then ending of an old thing or the beginning of a new thing. And so transition is the process or period of changing from one state or condition to another. And so this is where many of you are. You're in transition. And this is a very strange place to be because God wants you to relax in this place. He wants you to quote unquote, lose control in this place, like surrender. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He wants you to surrender to take your control off of the situation, off of the outcome. You are called according to his plan and purpose now. And so you have to wait on him. Thank you, Lord. Let me not get ahead of myself. Many are in a place where you feel like you have no control and this is how it's supposed to be. 
God is changing you from an uh, earthly citizen, so to speak, to being on earth, but not of it and operating from the kingdom and by kingdom principles. And this is just simply his word and what he's laid out in his word. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So you're being led by God and by his Holy Spirit now, right? So this is what you have to trust and, and trust Jesus, right? He's leading you as well. But just as a guide will say, turn left, stop here, go right, etc. This is what you have to be sensitive to in this season, sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit, you guys, or that feeling that you have on the inside that that, you know, like, man, I should just be waiting right now, even though, you know, I, I'm used to just working and doing stuff. I just feel like I shouldn't be doing anything right now. And that is OK. Some of you are called to that specific rest right now. Some of you just feel like, okay, maybe I need to be fasting right now. I just really feel that God is calling me to a fast. And then that's what you do. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And so much more. You're going to feel that God is saying, look again for some of you, right? Meaning look at the, the vision, look at the blueprint again, look at your journals, look at your notes, look at what thus said the Lord to you. Go back over those words that he has spoken to you. Some of you, it's a push that you feel that you need to push harder, meaning that consistency, meaning that you need to continue to stay consistent in what God has called you to do because he's about to manifest the harvest of what you've put into the ground, the sowing that you're doing into what he's giving you to do, what he's placed into your hands. Thank you, Lord. And then there's another group of you that is getting stuck at the instruction part or you think you're stuck, right? So some of you are doing the work Right. For example, if God told you to start a business, you've started doing a few things towards it. But some of you still feel like you're not doing anything, like you're not accomplishing anything. And this is the mustard seed, if you will, of, of the promise. Right. Like you're starting to sow into what God has told you to do. And so then some of you are just getting stuck at instruction, meaning you're not doing anything. Like you don't want to make the wrong decision. You don't want to say the wrong thing. Those of you who God is calling to ministry, many of you are stuck at that place because you're uh, afraid that you, you're you not going to sound right or that you're going to tell God's people something wrong or whatever it is. God is saying, stay in my presence. As long as you get it from me, go forward in it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And so a lot of you too are in the place where you want to please God so much, so bad that it's turning into this toiling, it's turning into fear, it's turning into anxiety, and you just want to do the right thing. You just want to please him so bad that it's causing this same paralysis that I was speaking of earlier. But what pleases God is your obedience to his commands. As he said, he gives the instruction and my command is that you follow it. This is obedience that God is looking for. This is what he's also blessing. Thank you, Lord. So this is a time where you have to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and discern what he is saying and then act on it. Okay. No matter how big or small your action is, just know that you have to do your part. This is a partnership with the Lord, you guys, in relationship and then in purpose. Thank you, Father. And so God is going to come through at what seems to be the last moment for some of you so that his wonders and miracles may be multiplied. And this last moment is like your midnight hour. And this is what I was hearing. I kept hearing yesterday about that midnight hour and just the situations um, I was coaching my clients through and, and the things that God had been doing for them. And so there are many events in scripture where God did something in the midnight hour. The bridegroom will come at the midnight hour, according to Matthew 25, 6. God's judgment on the Egyptians, Exodus 11. Paul and Silas in prison, Acts 16. And there are many more. So God judges. He opens doors. He releases things. He blesses as well in the midnight hour. And there are other spiritual implications to this as well. And I'm not going to get into, but your midnight hour will produce results 
of stronger faith, of patience and perseverance and trust in him. And this is what many of you are being tested on. And so this is twofold. God is teaching many of you in your midnight hour to trust him, to discern his promptings and to know his voice. And then in all of this, he wants to surprise you with what seemed impossible to come through for you, right? So this could be a job. This can be an apartment, a home that you're waiting for. This can be something small that you desired, um, like a, a material thing or whatever it is, right? God wants to surprise you with this very thing. He wants to give you his favor because you are his favorite in Jesus name. So on the second side of this, many of you have had a hard heart, meaning complaining uh, your lack of trust in God, your lack of confidence in him towards what he's going to do for you or you feel like he's not going to show up for you or he should have shown up by now, right? And we've all been there, but God is always speaking. But sometimes this doubt, this unbelief, this lack of trust, all this noise in our heads speak louder than what God is saying. So you got to quiet that down. This is why God is saying, rest, rest, rest. You got to quiet that down so you can hear from him and then pay attention to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. What you know in your spirit, you should be doing. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So it's not in God's character to leave you hanging without any direction. And all you have to do is seek him and he'll give you that direction. If you don't know what the prompting of the Holy Spirit is, sit with the Lord to have him reveal that to you. And this is what he wants to teach you then in this season to discern him, to learn him, to know what his presence feels like tangibly, to know that you're in his presence when you don't feel it tangibly. Thank you, Holy Spirit, to know that you're always with him. Thank you, Lord. Psalm 5110 says, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Ezekiel 36, 26 says, and I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. So God is transplanting hearts in this season. He is giving new hearts in this season. He's been doing it since last year, but we're all on our different phases and walks and journeys with God and levels, right? in depth with God as far as our relationship. And so he's cleaning out hearts. He's cleaning house, meaning our temples, getting us in order so that we understand his character. And we know that he's not here to harm us, even when we feel like our back is against the wall, right? And this is the hard part of being a human being because God made us with a free will. And so when we have to lay down our will to accept God, when you do this for the first time, it's very strange. It's very hard. We just continue to move forward in our journeys and in life with God. We come up on situations and circumstances and things where we are tested in it. And so it's a constant walk with him, a constant trusting him, a constant having confidence in him. And this is why he always says, you've got to stay in my presence so that you don't get to tripping up here in your mind, right? and, and uh, accusing him of being someone that he isn't. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And so overall, God is not doing a small thing in your life. However, there are small steps to the process, guys. So God is not gonna send you backwards. He's not gonna do any of that, but be ready for him to even change like the trajectory of your life or the direction of your life to catapult you into your purpose and your assignment. So stay near to him. He will stay near to you and rest assured God is going to make it happen on these earthly streets, just as it is in the heavenly streets in the mighty name of Jesus. That is Matthew 6, 10 in my version. So thank you all so much for tuning in. Thank you all for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. I see like half of you come in and watch the videos and you don't subscribe, but please subscribe. That'll help me get myself to a place where they can verify my account so we can get rid of these scammers and all that good stuff, right? So thank you guys so much for that. Um, I also thank each and every one of you for your prayers, uh, for your support of this ministry, whatever you're doing financially, whether you're sharing the ministry videos, whatever it is, I thank you guys so much. I love you all so much with the love of Christ. Most importantly, Jesus loves you and I'll talk to you soon.